Hello folks, hope you're having a wonderful time and a wonderful day. It is time for some more hobby nightmares where we jump into what's been going on in the tabletop wargaming hobby and some of the incidents that you've come across during your time rolling dice in our wonderful sphere of world that we have going on from Battletech to 40k to Age of Sigmar and everything in between. Let's look at some hobby nightmares, shall we? Starting with Son of Salop. Really weird name, but there we go. And Son of Salop says, and I quote, Please call me Son of Salop, for those who care. Salop is a yield name for the country of Shropshire, or the county of Shropshire, of which I am naturally a proud son. Good lad, okay. Greetings North. Hope this finds you well. I had been debating whether it was worth sending this in, and it was actually your recent video, the 9th of May, in which you mentioned archery and its value as a hobby and cultural activity that made me decide to do so. Yeah, it is. It is. As an Englishman, you should really do archery. Um, it's our culture. It's our thing. Um, you should really go and do it. Get to head up there and do it. While it's not directly modelling related, archery is also relevant towards the end of my contribution and is the icing of the cake of the whole situation. I will try in general, though, to keep things on topic of modelling and wargaming. Just forgive my accidental ch tangents. As the topic of my hobby, nice mare, is my absolute hobbyist dream of a girlfriend. Okay. Everyone's going to die of jealousy here, I think. Now... I am aware that every man who has ever been lucky enough to be raised well by their family and community and is in a stable, loving relationship believes they are each the luckiest man in the world. The story of my relationship thus far will prove why that is the case for me. I also hope this may be any help to any listeners who may have a tendency to feel down about the modern dating situation or those prone to settle. Quote unquote. I hope this proves that sometimes it is worth avoiding the instant gratification of a toxic, easy relationship. That there are those out there who adore our lifestyle and are worth waiting for. However, that also comes with the message that is dependent on you as the nerd or the hobbyist to put the work in as well. And that metaphorically or literally spending life in the parents' basement painting space marines whilst waiting for an amazing person to turn up isn't going to work. Yeah, yeah, that, that is something... As somebody who has a YouTube channel like this, the, one of the, my main bugbears, one of the things that keeps happening, is people will come and will ask for advice and ask them how to change their lives and ask to how they're going to progress. And when you give them very clear, concise answers on how to do that, they don't want to do it, right? They're, they're, they're like, well, there's no point doing that because, you know, it's not going to work. Okay, mate. Fine. You know, move on. Because I, I can't help you if you don't want to be helped, Right? Doctors are like that too. If you don't want to be helped, they can't help you. So, you know, it's what it is. Um, and sitting in your basement or painting your models and not going out there isn't going to work, right? If you want the if you want the girlfriend, if you want the friends, you've got to leave your house. That's a non-negotiable. You've got to leave your house. Right? If you want real-life friends, real-life people, you can't be sitting in your house painting all day or gaming. Preamble aside... Here's how I have become the luckiest hobbyist within the space of a year. Feel free to insert tea sipping breaks here and there before starting the next paragraphs. Okay, thank you. My girlfriend and I, we'll call her Joy, because that's her name and I love it, met through a mutual friend last February. Things went very well in the early interest phase of romance and relationships, although I promised to try to keep things relevant to the hobby, so there's little point in going into details which aren't directly related to it. What is worth mentioning, though, is that she is a big fan of history and is insanely creative in just about every way. As a 23-year-old history teacher with a, with a military history master's, this was a pretty big hit with me. She is also into some slightly different fa facets of history than I am, which is fantastic. As someone into their history north, I'm sure you can explain how cool it is when you meet someone talking about their area of history, when they're just as nerdy about it as you are yourself, about something else. Yeah, yeah. This interest in history and her creative side leads us to the first big win. Those two aspects help me feel comfortable enough to talk about how some of my Napoleonic models are when she was visiting. 
and I showed them off. Nice. One Monday evening, when asking what I'd been up to, I admitted that I had been out wargaming that evening, which eventually led me to being more comfortable discussing Warhammer with her as well, showing some of my heresy models the next time she was over. Now, this in itself is a pretty big deal for me. By this stage of my life, I'm happy with who I am, and I'm not really bothered about what people are... Uh, sorry. I'm not really bothered about what people beyond those close to me think about my hobbies, etc. However, naturally, I did face the average secondary school experience of Warhammer players. Even having one of my close friends, who does historical wargaming, joining in one day, because I also did 40k at the time. And it was easier for him to join in with the crowd than stand by, I suppose. While it was my dad who got me into modelling as he's been doing Warhammer, uh, sorry, World War II models since he was eight, he also struggles to see the attraction of anything fictional besides Lord of the Rings. Yeah, that's because uh, Lord of the Rings is basically based on history, right? You know what I mean? It's not historical, but it's like, you know, it's so ingrained in, in historical leanings that it may as well be history. Um, this is all relevant because for many years it affected my openness about my hobbies. When we'd finally have family or guests over, for, for example, I might tidy my modelling area and just leave historical models visible, if any. As I mentioned, though, Joy made me feel comfortable enough not only to leave my models out to be seen, but to get talking about the setting and the gaming side of things with her. I suppose this describes the tone of our relationship as a whole, that we're comfortable enough that with, uh, with each other that we could mention anything about anything without being judged or worry about being seen as weird. I have a great wargaming group, which is more like a group of lads and my brother, who get together at each other's houses for Monday night games, rather than a properly organised club. I think this more normal or casual approach also eased Joy's mind, as she's able to see we're just a bunch of friends doing something we enjoy together whilst catching up, rather than being like any stereotypes of Warhammer players. Say what you will about us playing Heresy rather than 40k, and how that correlates to that. Yeah, um... Yeah, I, I, I have come across... Her Heresy Gamers... Okay, let me take a sip of tea here before I, I go in on this. Right, so... Heresy Gamers have an older reputation, right? And they have a reputation for being more normal than 40k gamers. Please don't, you know, get angry with me. Please don't get upset with me. It, it's true. They, they just do. Because they're an older, more refined crowd. These are all dads... These are all people who saw 40k, said that's not quite complicated enough for me. I'm going to go do something else. I like the law. I like telling stories about things that are going on in the law. So instead of doing 40k, where it's basically a smorgasbord of whatever you want, they go into a they, they go into Horus Heresy, where there are strict rules of what is allowed and what isn't, and what can happen and what can't. Yeah, more adult. It is a thing. No. Anyway, now, my parents have quite a big kitchen, so every six to eight weeks, our heresy group uses their kitchen table for an eight to ten thousand points all day Saturday game with four to six players. It can be quite an intense day, full of rules remembering, maths, tactics, and so on. Essentially, a highly concentrated mega nerding session. Here, we come on to two more of Joy's qualities that make her perfect for the hobbyist in me. Her sociability. And her absolute wizardry with anything food related. One evening when discussing when we were going to next see each other. I realised I had accidentally double booked myself for our big game and seeing Joy on the same weekend. I think I am yet to mention at the moment she works in London. Something else will become relevant later. So we are reasonably long distance. Hence the planning of weekends going forwards. Rather than taking me up on my offer to cancel the game. Joy decided she would not be intimidated by a day of concentrated nerding and that she'd come to stay anyway. In her own words, and I quote, It would be such a whole it would be so, sorry, it would be so wholesome to meet everybody and make something for you all for lunch while you're playing in the kitchen. Dude. Don't make me feel jealous. Oh, my woman's amazing. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? My woman's amazing, and even I'm feeling jealous. <clears throat> okay. This turned out to be quite true, 
as she happily chatted to us all about the game, as well as generally letting us know some of the others and uh, getting to know some of the others and making us an exceptional lunch. She joined in with a few lore related jokes she had picked up from my brother and I when certain moments happened in the game, and is quick witted enough that she was able to fire back a response to any jokes made at her at our expense. Needless to say, everybody in our group now quite high, right sorry now quite rightly thinks she's a legend. Okay, cool. Uh, if if I stumble over words, it's because I'm changing the um, the page. I mean, I'm, I'm flicking to the next page. Anyway, here we come to why Joy working in London is relevant. She does high end property photography for one of the big estate agents in London which naturally also involves digital, digital editing. When we add digital photo editing experience to her willingness to engage with us and the hobby, and her love for creating things, I'm sure you can see where this is going. Yes, that's right. She took photos of my models with her work camera, and with her very limited knowledge and context of 30k, edited them into realistic looking settings. She got them professionally uh, printed for me for Christmas, so now they are framed in my hobbying area. I'll attach the digital versions in the hope that it's convenient for you to put them up on the screen during the rest of the tale. Since Joy did those first ones, she has also done a similar one from my brother's Alpha Legion Prey Tour, and is currently editing one of my friend Sanguinius, Sanguinius models, which she took at our most recent big Saturday game. Let's have a little look. I am on my laptop, so today I can do some pictures. Oh, white scars. Cool, man. Cool. All right, this. Pretty awesome. Very nice. Is that his natural helmet? Hmm. That does look cool. That does look really cool. That looks pretty awesome, dude. I, I, I'm not gonna lie. That that is great. That is great. That's pretty cool. I'm going to leave these on here now. Yeah, the only reason why I'm doing photos today is because I'm on my laptop. And usually, I'm not, and so I, I can't. Uh, but if you want me to do any any other pictures of your models, send them in and put Friday in front of the email. That means I'll be doing them on Friday, so I can I can put them up and people can see your lovely, lovely, lovely modeling work. Mm. All right. By this point, you may be thinking, this is about as cool as it gets. However, things are about to get even more amazing. What originally got me into Games Workshop models, and the one side of Warhammer that my dad was entirely on board with, was Lord of the Rings. Dad is very into Lord of the Rings, and was even before the films were, ever, were even released. Therefore, much of my favourite years were spent reading or watching or painting and playing Lord of the Rings. As I've gotten older, it has, become, sorry, it has come to mean an awful lot to me. Beyond just being a fan who thinks that films are cool, I really appreciate and value Tolkien's work as a for what it is, in its amazing fantasy setting and incredible style of writing, but also the deeper morals and meaning within the story, and behind his motivations for including certain things. I spent a good deal of time studying in music and cinematography of the films too, and how both support the emotion and meanings behind the original work. I better not get too far into it or I'll massively sidetrack myself, but suffice to say, I believe The Lord of the Rings to be one of the most culturally significant pieces of literature to come out of Britain in the 20th century. It's not one of, mate, it's the. It's not one of, it's the. It's the most important literary epic to come out of the UK in the 20th century, maybe beyond. Maybe way beyond that. I, I, I'm, I'm talking... Back to Shakespeare. I think after Shakespeare, you know, Lord of the Rings is king. I'm being honest. Um, absolutely. Uh, to bring it back to our relationship, you can imagine my reaction when it came up in conversation and I discovered Joy had never read the books or seen the trilogy. Exasperation at first, of course, as I often feel at, uh, at school when the kids ask me what on earth the Lord of the Rings is, but also excitement that I would get to share in somebody else's first experience of the setting. Joy had never really thought to watch them, because it was not really her thing. We watched Fellowship together shortly afterwards, 
and as with so many others who say the same thing, it turned out to be quite her thing. How could such a masterpiece not be? Within the next couple of weeks of watching the first film, I happened to see one of the greatest opportunities of my life advertised, The Lord of the Rings in concert. As I mentioned, I'm currently 23, so I wasn't old enough to have the excitement or feeling of seeing them released in cinemas originally. My dad had always told me how powerful it was to see on the cinema screen, and at some point every year, I've ended up searching to see if it ever gets a cinema rerun. Dude, I did that with um, Jurassic Park, like a few, a few, I think it was like last year. They, they threw Jurassic Park on over the summer in my local cinema, and I went to watch it, and it was great. It was amazing. Really, really, really good stuff. Really good. It still holds up. Still holds up. All the way through. Holds up. Um, and that seems to only happen in the US. This was going to be one step better. Being shown at the Albert Hall with a live orchestra. At this point, Joy and I had been together for just over eight months. So I was happy enough for us to get tickets for the, for the Return of the King. Which would be showing in March this year. As we had watched Fellowship sometime in the autumn... I realised what an amazing opportunity it would be to space out when we watched the films so that Joy's first time she saw that the, the Return of the King would be in the Albert Hall in concert. Without getting too diverted, it was, an, it was as incredible as you can imagine. And being able to share it with somebody else was amazing. Dude, I think this is your wife. I'm not going to... I mean, you, you go on for quite a while here, so I may stop soon. Because we're getting to, you know, gushing territory. It's like a Mills and Boone novel. Um, all right. I'll read this next bit, but if, if we don't go into anything more like, like beyond like how amazing the relationship is, I'm going to move on, okay? No offense. I just, you know. Anyway. Um, it was all, it's also relevant to backtrack a little to when we watched The Two Towers at Christmas time as there is a fair bit more action in that than in the Fellowship. Joy found it much more engaging and enjoyed it even more, especially taking a liking to the Galadrim Elves. At the time, we also had a family friend staying with us for a week, who used to work at Games Workshop. As a result of all the Lord of the Rings talk at home, we decided to crack out some of the huge collection of Games Workshop models, Middle Earth models, and have a few small games. At first... Joy would either be cooking or baking something while our friend and I played on the kitchen table, or doing some of her own drawing and or painting at the end of the table. Over time, however, she started to volunteer to roll for more and more things, and we eventually got her into some full games using the elves. As an aside, it turns out the more dice rolls she rolls at once, the worse she gets. If there are eight Galadrim archers and she rolls for one of them at a time, she will typically get a five, kill five or six orcs. Whereas if she rolls all eight together, she might only get three hits. Even though they hit on threes. During these games, we discover Joy's real wargaming passion, creating the scenery. As we were playing with the elves, we realized we didn't have much wooded terrain to use with them. It turns out Joy is more than up for making use uh, for making these things to use in game, and that she was for battles. And sorry, I, you, your your sentence has gone higgledy piggledy there. Um, all right, I've yet to mention that her degrees in landscape architecture. For anybody wondering how on earth that degree and her job as a London property manager are related, she initially got it through the floor planning side due to experience of doing similar plans for gardens. As part of her course. Over the next couple of days, I watched in amazement and infatuation as she suggested all sorts of ideas, materials, and ways of doing things that I had never even considered doing, despite having made plenty of terrain myself. By the end of it, we had some incredible large wooded area terrain made, which looked far better than if I just made them myself. I'm not sure if I've ever been more in love than seeing my already amazing girlfriend covered in foam insulation dust polyfiller and pva telling me to get out the way and let her do it because uh, don't you know that you, you can use clumps of brown static grass and put flock on top of it to make realistic bushes and brambles all right i'm done okay uh that's amazing man i'm really glad you're in a really 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 good place and a really good relationship um you know i'm gonna move on a little bit just to, to this next little bit because 
you know, you're talking about your hesitancy and letting her know and, and sharing your models and stuff, which is fine. But like the gushing stuff, I need to cut short. So I'm going to skip back a bit of that. All right. All right. Um, I can't tell you how insane it is to have some, to have gone from being hesitant to display any of my models to having a girlfriend who shares my interests, takes part in the hobby, wants to be on board with my projects and is able to make genuinely good suggestions or critiques in a little over a year. If you had asked me about my ideal relationship 18 months ago, I wouldn't have even considered it looking this good from a hobby perspective. I imagine there might be listeners wondering, why on earth has he not put a ring on it? As some of my heresy group said after first meeting her, and I assure you all, I fully intend on doing so at the right time, as we've already uh, pretty openly been able to discuss it, and would hope to, to uh, and I would hope to sometime in the next year. All right. <clears throat> I hope this might have been a hobby story worth reading out. I might help some people understand the sort of people who are who are out there if you make the right choices on our lifestyle and how we present ourselves. Sometimes in our lonely periods, we're inclined to think a normal girl would uh, who would be into our hobby is too good to be true. But while it does feel almost too good to be true, it is true for me. I would hate if hearing about how I'm lucky enough to be winning with my relationship makes someone feel single or lonely instead i hope it drives people to work on themselves to the point that they can have the same or for those who are already there to go out and find it chin up boys i hope it can be true for you lads as well with the right mindset thanks for taking the time to read this north uh okay uh, no worries man um yeah i agree i agree um how do i put this I do think you went a bit over the top there, right? It, it, it's called Hobby Nightmares. If you're going to send me in a Hobby Nightmare, ha have something to say about it, right? For a long time there, you're gushing over your relationship, and that's great. I'm really happy you found your, your, your one, man. And yeah, you should put a ring on it and definitely go the whole nine yards. Hmm. But at the same time, um, you know, I, I, I prefer you got to the point of it quicker, if you know what I mean, you know? But I'm really glad you're happy. I'm really glad things are going well. And yeah, lads, like, th things can work out for you if you just put a bit of effort into yourself. Have a bit of pride in your own appearance. Have a bit of pride in how you come across to others, right? Put some nice clothes on. Make sure that you're smelling nice, that, you, you're, that you're well kept. If you're overweight, make sure that you're wearing clothes that are appropriate to your size. There's nothing wrong with being overweight, dude. We've all had problems. We, we've all had really bad jobs where we're eating loads of rubbish every day. That's not a problem. Just wear clothes appropriate to your size and carry it well. You know? I've seen some massive dudes get with some really good looking women over the years. It's all about attitude and being able to walk into a room and smile and have people be, be there with you as well. Do you know what I mean? So I honestly don't think that, and, and well, there may be a few people who get a bit bitter, but at the same time, I think we just got to celebrate your success and say, look, you know, well done to you, man, and well done for, you know, getting your way through the hobby. Do you know what I mean? Well, well done for getting your happy ending at such a young age. I hope it works out, but just be well aware that if it doesn't, it ain't the end of the world. This is the kind of relationship that if it breaks down, it has a tendency to ruin your life. Because you thought you had it all, right? You literally thought you had it all there, and it's gone, right? So just be very, very, very careful. If it doesn't work out, don't do anything silly. All right? Cool. Moving on. Uh, Cody says, Hi, North. You may call me Cody. My story revolves around me and my fellow soldiers stationed on a U.S. Army base up in Alaska. 40K has become more popular in the military community over the past few years. So about a year ago, I caught word about it and decided to give it a try. As of then, I have collected a large Imperial Guard army of around 6,000 points. I love the Guard and consider myself to be a very passionate person about the law and the faction itself. I am an avid Mor Mordian glory viewer. The true defenders of humanity. Nothing wrong with that man, Mordian's a lovely bloke. I've uh, been, on his, been on his channel once, it was nice. Nice guy. Anyway... I play mainly with a small group of other soldiers. Between training and other shenanigans, we try to get games in whenever we are able. 
most of us try to play casually and consider hyper competitiveness to be a bit cringe. After all, this is a toy soldier game, but when I say most of us play casually, I mean all but one. Let me introduce my friend, Enemy, whom we will call Evan. Evan is an avid Black Templar player, oh don't ruin Black Templars for me, who discovered the hobby around about the same time that I did. Outside of the hobby, he is generally a nice dude. But in the hobby, he has become notorious for shit stomping every player he goes up against. After decimating every member of our group, including myself, he, he ventured his wrathful Black Templars over to the local hobby store to find more victims. This guy went on to beat every person he came up against, including local tournament winners, and he beat them with relative ease. Okay, maybe this guy... This is Nor talking now. Maybe this guy's just a good player, you know? Have you ever met people who are, like, preternaturally gifted at Warhammer? I have. I, I know a lot of people who can take a rabble of peasants and go on to form entire fucking empires, you know what I mean? That kind of general ship level. Mm. Really cool people. Uh, and some people are just good at the game, you know? Being good at the game doesn't doesn't automatically make you toxic. I think that's something that in Hobby Nightmares we forget sometimes. It's not. Right? Some people are just really fucking good at Warhammer, and it's their thing, which is fine. Um, as of now, he has only ever lost one game, and that was his very first. Okay. On the surface, no, none of this sounds like an issue. If somebody keeps winning, but is a good sport and respectable about it, there should be no issue, I agree. But Evan, however, had begun to see himself as a strange strategic genius, and was not shy about reminding us of this fact, and loved to talk about his undefeated win streak. Now, it's undeniable the reason Evan wins so much is because he created the most meta Black Templar army he could research. He says he just plays what he thinks looks cool. But that's obviously bullshit. The strategy he uses, 95% of the time, boils down to moving Black Templar infantry and transports onto his enemy by turn 2, and having Hellbrecht and other powerful infantry, maul infantry units, uh, uh, maul enemy units to death. He also makes great use of drop pods and other deep strike methods. All his units are also protected by invulnerable saves and feel no pain abilities which makes trying to fend off his units nearly impossible before he brings the pain to your army. I'll admit, Black Templars have been doing great in 10th edition, and in my opinion, are stacked with great attachments and abilities, etc. It is very much a headache to play against them. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I will... Are Black Templars doing really well, though? You know? Let me just see. Top factions. Current... 40k. Um, yeah, custodies are, are up there. I know that. Yeah. I didn't think Black Templars were up there. Guys, are, are Black Templars up there? Are they way up there in the power levels? I never thought that they were. I thought that they were like in middling, if not, the Black Templars. Hmm, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. But maybe I'm seeing Space Marines and I'm just, I'd lump them in with all the other Space Marines because Space Marines are not very strong in 40k right now uh, as a thing. You know what I mean? Um, you know, I, I, and, and bog standard Space Marine army isn't a big power level army at the moment. Do you know what I mean? Um, one thing I have seen before I stopped playing 10th is that Space Marine players sort of fell away and the ones who were left were the really good ones. With the really good Warhammer 40k players, because they were still winning with bog standard Space Marines in current 10th edition, which is no mean feat. Do you know what I mean? Anyway. Anyway, what makes him a nightmare to deal with is that his bragging and ego have become a bit of a problem for me and others to, to, that we play with. Every game we play with him, he will say things like, and I quote, I don't know how I'm, how I'm this good at 40k. Oh my god. Or, Black Templars are so broken. <laughs> he says these things while his army is in the midst of, a, of destroying ours. The worst lines he says to me repeatedly, uh, repeatedly are, and I quote, You should really switch your army to Space Marines, man. And, It's your fault for choosing such a weak army. 
These comments have made me grow an unwanted hatred towards the Black Templars on the tabletop. I'm sad to say he also does not shy away to tell us that our factions are far inferior to his master race faction. When Evan first figured out what the Space Marine Atreus tank was, he quickly bought and built it, then proceeded to brag and show her off as if it was some sort of mail order bride we could never obtain. The tank was the misery of our group, and at one point, we even plotted to kidnap and destroy it behind Evan's back. That is such an army thing to do. That is such an army 0 to 100 thing to do. <laughs> like normal people. You may joke about it, but you don't seriously entertain it. Army people, fuck that shit, it's going in the bin, right? Which we never did, or would of course. The tank had led me to buy, then build, two Bane Blades in our never-ending 40k arms race. Yeah, the only winner here, lads, is Games Workshop. Personally, I don't get to play 40k as often since I'm married and have two kids now. Family comes first, after all. So the little time I do get to play, I want it to be a relaxing experience. I get that experience when I play anybody but Evan. The problem is that Evan is the most autistic about playing and is usually always available. Since I love playing the game, I usually end up playing him the most. At first this was no big deal. I was new and expected to lose. But then games just became repetitive with the same Black Templar beatdown experience. Gradually, I began not to have as much fun playing against him. It became harder to have the willpower to put up with his army. Now, to clarify, I could play other opponents successfully and have uh, a, a few wins here and there. My Cadians could still obtain glory on the battlefield, thankfully, every now and again. But with Evan, it was just a constant beatdown and putdown verbally. Evan even tried building another army made up of orcs just to see if he could be beaten whilst not playing Templars. And as of right now, nobody has beaten him yet. I have yet to comprehend how to defeat the Stomper, and it has infiltrated my backlines by turn one. Uh, one cannot play guard if the guard cannot shoot. Recently, Evan was snobbishly going on in our group about how he just wanted to lose one game and how nobody could grant him his wish. Dude, this guy's a fucking moron. This guy's a moron. Oh, I wish it wasn't this good at the game. Which one of you could finally beat me, put, you know. Uh, dude. I think he, he thinks he's like a Dark Souls boss, you know. By the way, the fact that Ghost is on PC and now Ghost is Shima, it's so fucking funny seeing the butt hurt Dark Souls players. It's like, oh. Oh, yeah, it's just, mm, mwah, chef's kiss. Yes, that's what a good, difficult game looks like, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I've made the case so many times. Dark Souls games are not good games, and I'll die on the hill. They're not well-made games. Uh, you know. Where's the hitbox? I don't know. Ha <laughs> ha! You know, I, yeah, fuck you, stupid game. Anyway, um, irritated. I, I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for that. Irritated, I politely suggested that he... Well, I'm going to change the, uh, not just the song, but the page. Irritated, I politely suggested that he not be not bring as strong a list or have less kill-all tactics. He responded with, uh, so basically, let my opponent survive. Even more irritated now, I told him that nothing will change if he is so focused on dominating his opponent. None of us are geared that way, only him. Obviously, this went straight over his head, and we just began to go back and forth. By the end of it, I almost left the group chat and gave up on the hobby altogether. It did not help that he again told me to play a better army. Overall, I was kind of over all of the dickhead behaviour. Now, of course, I have no plans on giving up on 40k, and if things get too bad, I'll just be more strict with whom I play. After all, so much money and time has been invested into this hobby for it to be thrown away. All of this, however, has put a bad taste in my mouth for people who play the game hyper-competitive-like. Anyway, thanks for listening to me rant about this guy. Keep up the awesome work. Alright, so... What I would do in the situation, dude, I'm going to be dreadfully honest, is I think when you were talking to him that other time about, you know, 
I don't like the way that you play, blah, blah, blah. That would have been the time to say, listen, mate, um, you play the game however you want to. I have fun with everybody in this group. Win, lose, or draw. I have fun. The only person I don't have fun with is against is you, right? And it's not because I lose. I'm fine with losing. I lose against everybody else. I don't have fun with you because you act like a fucking douchebag when we're rolling dice, all right? So I don't want to play with you anymore. I will play with other people. You said it yourself. You said it yourself. You don't have a lot of time to play the hobby these days, so you need to adjudicate your own time, mate. If nobody is available to play but Evan, make a point of not playing with him, right? If he says, do you want to play? Be honest with him, even in public, and say, listen, man, I'll be honest with you. Whenever we play, I don't have a very good time, right? Win, lose, or draw against anybody else, and I lose a lot against everybody else, but I still enjoy playing them, right? When I play you, I think our personalities and our play styles and what we're here for are just completely different. So I don't have a good time playing you. All the best, but I'm not going to play you, all right? You go find someone else to play with, and I'll go find someone else to play with, and we'll, we'll call it quits, right? That's what you should do. Do not play with this guy again, Cody, all right? All you are doing is you are feeding his behavior. You know, there are no repercussions to his behavior, so why would you bother? You need to stand firm and say, no, I'm not playing you. Sorry, I'm not playing you. And this is why. With everybody else in this group, in this club, I have a really good time, win, lose, or draw. And I lose most of my games. It's not good, so it's not because of that. Before you go down that route, right? It's not because of that at all. I just don't think you're a very good player. And what I mean by that is you don't play the game in the same spirit that I do. I want my opponent to have fun. You're here to play for blood. You're here to ruin somebody else's day. I don't have that much time to play this hobby, so I'm not wasting my hobby time on you. Sorry, mate, right? And move on. That's what you should do. The next time he asks for a game, that's what you should do. The next time it comes up in the group where he starts talking shit like this, that's what you should do. Publicly say it to him on the group chat. Mate, I'm not playing with you. I'm not, I, for one, I'm not going to play with you anymore, and here's why, right? Just say that. A little public slap on the wrist. And then that means that you, now he's out of your hair. You don't enjoy playing against this guy. So what do you have to lose? What really do you have to lose? What's he going to do? Get mad and not play you again? Fine. You know? So that's what I would do. Be, be, come out and tell him exactly what you feel and exactly what you're thinking. You'll feel a lot better and you'll be able to go and get yourself some games that you're actually going to enjoy. And if you need to like play... 20% less Warhammer, fine. Fine. You know? Just do that. Alright? Cool. I love your long time. I will speak to you tomorrow for some more Hobby Nightmares. We have a full mailbag now, man. And we're going to be going through it over the next day or two. So I love your long time. I will speak to you then. And then on Thursday, we're going to be doing a rant on what Games Workshop managers think of you as customers. And I'll tell you now, I'll tell you right now, they don't like you very much. Hmm. See you then. Have a good one. Bye now.